I know I can, I will try. This video summarizes an article about technology written by Rebecca Nasland and Orsa Cardelli from Sweden. It was published in Disability in Society in 2013. There has been lots of research about disabled people using technology. Technology includes phones, computers and lots of other things. Sometimes the letters ICT are used in this video. It means the same thing. This research was about people with intellectual disabilities. In the UK we call that learning disabilities. But first, let's meet the people who made this film. Hello, my name's Julian Goodwin. Hello, my name is Carrie Ford. My, hello, my name's Lisa Bondi. Hello, my name's Val Williams. And I'm an editor of the journal Disability in Society. Um, and over the years, we've tried to include and involve all disabled people, but I'm not sure that we've ever done a really good job with people with intellectual disabilities. Julian Goodwin mm -hmm. um, from Nora Fry Research Centre mm -hmm. in Bristol in the UK has worked on all the articles from 2013 um, to choose one that would be interesting to other people with intellectual disabilities. Um, so Julian, which one did you choose? I chose a technology one. This article was written by Rebecca Naslund from Sweden. We're going to be talking to her about her research. Well, and we'll do that on Skype. Yeah. Rebecca? Yeah? What started you off on this research? And also, where did the title come from? Concerning the title, which is I know I can and I will try, it was actually inspired by one of the participants who before the project said, I do not know, I cannot, I have never tried. But during the project, this man become, became more secure. And we found his expression to be an illustration for what the article is actually about. Thank you very much. The article starts with some ideas. The main ideas are that when people use technology, they do it to take control of their lives and people learn from others. At first they may use technology with someone else, then they do it on their own. They can reach out to others. Who were the people that took part in the research? We had six young, young people in mm -hmm. the age from 15 to 20 yeah. and the older people, they were five, and they were in the age of 40 to 60, right? Yeah. And the young people, they were five boys and one young girl. Mm -hmm. And the older ones, they were three men and two ladies. And if they, I, I also guess you wanted to know perhaps what kind of disability, disabilities they lived with, right? Yes, I do, please. Uh, we have some of the young people, they have visual uh, challenges with their, with their vision and some had challenges with their, uh, with their um, speech and with their hearing, right? Yeah. And some of the older people also had uh, physical disabilities. Some of them were in wheelchairs mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah. What were the main methods you used during the research and what worked best? I would say what we did was that we used observations, right? Uh, we did video recordings, we used photographs, we used drawings, uh, and we had interviews with the young ones, the older ones, and also with the staff, right? And what I did when I interviewed the youth, I usually conducted the interviews in front of a computer. This is what the research found out. Young people had used the internet before. 
and most had used mobile phones. Most younger people had played games and communicated on the computer. They knew how to do things with technology. The older people did not know so much about how to use technology. The software they used was very childish. They needed things that were simple, but could be more adult. Can you tell us a bit more about these people and how they use computer and how they use um, technology? I would say when they come to the older ones, they used the computer together with stuff. And the staff assisted them, for instance, in switching the computer on and off and to open folders and files. Yes. When it comes to the young ones, they use computers and technology both at school as well as at home. Yes. And some of them used uh, mobile phones. Mm -hmm. And for some, it was a way of uh, communicating. For some, it was about learning about special interests, while for others it was about searching for future work. So they used it in many different ways. Thank you. These are two examples of people who learnt to use computers. Mikhail got better at asking for help when he needed it. He started to decide for himself what he wanted to do and to say whether he wanted to use the keyboard or touch screen. He began to use both hands together. Anders had a special interest in underground trains. With the support of his teacher, he sent email to staff who worked on the underground. They emailed him back. The study showed how people learnt new ways to express themselves by doing things with other people and with computers. The computers helped people to be in control of what they wanted to do they became more active. Using a computer helped people to find things that are interesting and worth doing. The research found that using technology is a social thing. People do it with others. Most of the people with intellectual disabilities had staff who helped them. What were the most important things that you found out? I would say that the most important things we found out was that people with intellect, intellectual disabilities, they know, they can, and they will try to work with information and communication technology. And we also found out that the use of information and communication technology, it's a good mediator, it's a good way for learning, as well as to increase one's own activity. But I also want to say that Again, it is very important with a society that takes into consideration that people with in intellectual disabilities can learn how to use technology and that it is very important to believe that they can do so. So it's, again, it's a mixture of the individual together with the society and the technologies in between, right? Right. Yeah. Thank you very much for your um, time. Um, it was nice speaking to you on Skype. <laughs> Maybe we could come to your country. That would be lovely for us to have you as our guest. Imagine you coming to our university. What a pleasure for us. How happy we would be. Having talked to Rebecca on Skype, this is what we like to say about how we like to use technology in England. Technology is wonderful because you can keep contact with people, especially on Facebook or on Skype. I um, use text messages. To, I use emails on on laptops, my laptop and the phone. And I use photography. I take pictures with my phone. To talk to someone somewhere else is actually a really amazing for me. When Val sent me the email about this interview being taken place, yeah. I was, we were both very honoured. Because this is what me and Osa has always wanted our research to reach out to the audience. You see, 
when you do research at university, it's a very limited group of people who can read it. And in my case, I did research with young people. And after I finished it, I have been struggling all the time with how I can enable it for people with intellectual disabilities to get a hold of it. And thank God, I feel really blessed to have these possibilities to sit and do this interview with you because you have enabled this to come true. So we are both grateful for this. Thank you so much. Thank you.